Hello everybody, I hope we're all well. Um, I just thought I'd make this a quick video for you. As you can see, I'm in Red Cine X Pro 5.5, which means the other 54 versions had something wrong with them. Now they're on version 55, nice huh? Uh -huh. So anyway, here we have the lovely Corey, uh, and we're replaying this um, red R3D file in Red Cine X. I've currently got it at it was shot uh, 250 ISO, 5600 Kelvin, um, it kind of it comes in at medium contrast, but you know you can choose whichever you want to watch. But I mean, for this little example, I suppose I'll leave it on medium contrast. Uh, I'll I'll put it on low contrast. Um, I've also got it at one eighth um, file size for playback because my laptop is pretty old and pretty slow when you try and play back. 5k files with uh, 1000 megabits of information it's pretty rubbish um, so anyway what we did is we shot our 3d files and we shot them at this low iso very deliberately and i just wanted to show you why because what the intention is it's it's for ben hi ben um once he's done the edit with adam and they've got the picture locked and they they like what they're seeing in regards to the story there might be places where we want to play around with the original decision to have these colors running through the film, which were kind of orange, blue, green, and obviously the darkness of nighttime. So tungsten colors, neon blues, uh, steel green kind of night kind of feels to it all. Um, and we kept them in, and what I wanted to make sure we could do was that further down the line, if they were a bit dark, we could brighten them. Now, as you know, when you try and brighten digital files, um, it just creates digital noise, and it's really ugly. And even if it's on for a few seconds, you know, you you feel a bit, you feel a bit daft, like having seen it, because you're thinking, well, why didn't we know that in advance? So when you're doing films like this, which is super super short pre-production, um, super fast schedule, there's not a lot of room for error, uh, because I doubt we're going to come back and shoot things again. So I decided to shoot at 250 ISO, which is just just under a stop and a half, um, darker than the sensor, the raw sensor records at, which is 800 ISO. So that means we've got a bit of latitude to brighten things later and also change the contrast and also change the color balance if we want it really warm or really cold. So now this is loaded a little bit. I'm just gonna show you an example by pressing play, okay? I don't know if you can hear the volume very well because I don't think it's connected to this kind of quick time screen recording playback, but I'm gonna play it anyway. So as you can see, we've got Lovely textures, shadows, colors, moving around, warm colors, darks. It's all very lovely. And it's all very nice. It's all very lovely. So if we go back to a similar spot, I think it was um, around about 28 seconds. So oh no, there we go. It's about here anyway. And what I can do is, what we can now do, is we bump that up to like, let's say 500. So we've bumped it up a stop. Uh, let's knock it down to like 3200, so it's nice and cold for nighttime. Uh, and let's make it eye contrast, because we've gone up um, with the ISO. Um, we'll take that soft roll off and make it a hard roll off, so it's a lot more high contrast. And as you can see, all that warmth is gone um, because we've added so much blue to the image. But what you have done is you've brought the skin tones back to something a bit colder. Maybe that might be wanted later on in the film. Um, so the idea with this was basically by not by not baking it in to a traditional codec, it gives this flexibility because when we made layer and we got into the grade, you know, Adam decided that he wanted quite a few scenes to look really differently to how I'd originally colored them and lit them. I, I used quite warm sodium colors because they were quite contemporary um, at that time. And once we got the edit done, Adam looked at it and realized that he wanted it much more kind of cold and blue. Um, so in order to kind of facilitate that this time, we can do this. We can up the ISO to 500. We can cool down the, uh, the white balance. Um, and you've got a completely different look now. You know, maybe it's not as, not as friendly, not as familiar. It's you know, so that's what we're interested in. 
is having this flexibility and being able to change things. So if I just pause that there, so if I pause that there, you know, look at the colors you've got on the back wall here, more, all that gray and brown. You've still got a little bit of color here and a little bit of color here, but all these skin tones have become a lot colder and so is the whole scene. So if we revert back to the original metadata in the image primary, like this, and on the contrast, you know, I'll go back to low and soft. Look, you've instantly got this completely different look. Um, and it's just metadata. So you can you can move move this around as much as you want again and again and again. You can go up on all the way up to 800. Uh, you can go all the way down to, you know, 2000, 2000, make it really cold. We can go super high contrast. You know, and look at that. It's totally different. Um, high roll off for the edging. You know, it's a completely different look. And this is what I wanted to keep available, which is what we didn't do last time to a degree because um, all the red footage was transcoded straight away to like a DNX or whatever it was, like an Avid friendly um, editing thing. So, and, and I don't agree with that. I don't think we need to do that. And it's the reason why David Fincher uses the red systems and he still uses them today is one, he's American and he, he's brand loyal, but two, he totally understands the flexibility in post-production of having this metadata. Uh, and I also think it's wonderful because, like I said, when you're rushing towards photography and you haven't had in, enough pre-production meetings um, about how we want it to actually look, then this is the best thing to do. Because that there, that right there, is a very noirish, you know, lovely image that is totally achievable because we shot raw metadata. And I would hate to lose that ability by transcoding it um, before it's necessary. So for Ben Hooten to make these edits offline with the proxies, get the story done, and then what we do before we go to a grade is we have a little look at where Adam thinks it's, you know, where it is, where he wants it, and then we can choose to output at a 4K log pro res for grading, or we can have a discussion about that when it's ready, um, not before it's ready. That's how I feel. Because again, quick look at that. Um, lovely muted colors everywhere. It's kind of cold, it's not very friendly. And then we go back to how we were. And all of a sudden, it's got a completely different feel. Still very lovely. Um, so it gives us options, doesn't it? So I hope this was a, a handy little uh, message for you all. Um, and let's have discussions and let's push this forward to make sure that uh, it ends up looking the best it can. All right, guys. Nice one. Ta-ra!